I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. I don't want to live my life again. Originally performed by the Ramones, and it was covered by Starcrawler for the 2019 remake of Pet Cemetery. Today, you heard it by Dave Watkins. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes dead is better. But the characters in these movies did not heed that warning. Today, we are going to rank all four of the Pet Cemetery movies. Pet Cemetery is based on a 1983 novel written by Stephen King. It's about an ancient Indian burial ground where the soil has gone bad. And if you bury something in it, it comes back. But different. And that's an understatement. It comes back and is some type of monster, like a ghoul creature thing. The story deals with grief and the fear of death. It may be tough for some viewers to watch because pets like dogs and cats and children die in it. But don't worry, they are brought back to life as monsters. And now this was a hard call, but with no further ado, going for number four, which is last, Pet Cemetery 2. Now this is the worst one, but in some ways it is also the best one. It's the only one that has a sense of humor. I love it really. It's bonkers. I saw it in the theater when it first came out. Even then I knew it was a terrible movie, but I probably would have ranked it higher had I not rewatched it and realized it's not as good as I remember. Starring a young Edward Furlong just after he had made Terminator 2. It also has Anthony Edwards in it as his dad before he made it R, but after he was already well known for Top Gun. But it's Clancy Brown here who stills the show as the sheriff and abusive stepdad to um, Edward Furlong's character's friend, uh, Drew. This movie does the worst job of all of them of giving the characters believable motivations to use the burial ground to bring someone back. And the movie doesn't care. You may find yourself screaming at the TV when the characters make some of the dumbest decisions ever. And the first act of this is... It, there's a lot of there's a lot of cliches in it, um, but the second half of the movie it goes nuts, and it, and it's it's what makes the movie because the second half of is a lot of fun. This one is to me has a higher rewatchability factor than, than any of the others. A little bit about this release, real quick. Now, this is a collector's edition put out by Scream Factory, and is the only one of the Pet Cemetery movies released by Screen Factory to date. It, there was a new 4K scan from the original camera negative. So the movie looks good. It is still on Blu-ray, but it, has, it is a 4K scan. It, it looks amazing. It could, um, it could since I, there's a 4K scan in existence, there could be an upgrade in the near future, perhaps. This is the cover art uh, that they released for it. Um, this is a slipcover. I'm not a big fan of this. It, it doesn't represent the movie to me. I think it should be Clancy Brown should be in the middle of it looking batshit crazy. I do like this cover art better. Um, th this is probably more appropriate, but I, I, it would be cool to see Clancy Brown on the cover looking like a friggin' nut. Uh, for the number three pick, I'm going to have to go with Pet Cemetery, the remake from 2019. Now this movie sat on my shelf for several years. Well, the, the Blu-ray version of this movie sat on my shelf for several years. I recently upgraded to the 4K and this is the first time I watched it. I heard a lot of bad things about this movie. I read a lot of awful stuff about it. I was hesitant to take a look at it because I'm a fan of the original. Pleasantly to my surprise, it's well done. I think the they capture the main atmosphere very nicely, and it's uh, very creepy. And there's some there's some darker scenes in some of the areas. Um, for those overly familiar with the story, they do make a few changes that um, subvert expectations. Like for instance, they instead of the the toddler um, son dying, the daughter dies and is brought back to life. I, I think this helps the character. The character has more screen time as an undead character because it's an older older actress and she's able to do some dialogue while she's undead. 
So unlike the fir in the first movie, it's a toddler, he can't talk. And she does a very convincing job of, of pulling these scenes off. The motivations of the characters generally make sense, and, and that's aided by something I think that's added for the first time here. The characters, especially Judd, the Judd character hears voices coming from the Indian burial ground wanting him to, to tell um, the dad, Lewis, to to bury the cat in in the in the burial ground, but those those whispers really add a lot to help helping connect the, the you know the characters being kind of manipulated into using the burial ground. The cast is terrific. John Lithgow plays the Judd Crandall part, originally played by Fred Gwynn in the first movie. He does his own take on the character. It, all of his scenes to me were mesmerizing. I, I love his acting in this and. Even the you know dad Jason Clark plays the dad and he does a great job as does the actress Amy I can't pronounce her last name but she does a great job playing the mom. A few of the the aspects that that worked better in the original one and the novel were, were the Victor Pascal character isn't used as much in this one so he doesn't make as much of an impact and then the sister of of the mom um, Zelda who died when she was a kid it's it's kind of effective but for some reason I, I don't think it works quite as quite as um, haunting as it does in, in the first movie. The reason I have this one lower on the list is because it is a remake. Uh, the story's been done before and it doesn't add a, add a lot more different to it. But it plays it safe, which, which is a good and a bad thing. Coming in at number two, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Now this is a prequel to the 2019 remake because they they have some of the aspects like the mask like they had in, in the remake. And that's another thing they added that was kind of cool to to the remake that I didn't mention before. But this one again like again when I watched it I didn't have a lot of expectations for it and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Here Jug Crandall, a teenage version of the character is the main character here. Um, the character played by John Lithgow in the remake and Fred Gwynn in, in the original. Now, the question here, why does Judd use the Pet cemetery in the future when he's supposed to be protecting it? And that, that's, that's a question that I think in many ways is answered. He's been guarding this Pet cemetery for 50 years. Now, the whole time, there's this ancient evil... Indian burial ground's been whispering weird shit to him, telling him to come out here and bury bury a, an animal or whatever, and it's been calling to him for for years, and and he just he breaks down. He he connects with the creed daughter, and he he wants to help her. So there's only one movie left, and what's it gonna be? The original 1989 Pet Cemetery. Now this cover here is the cover from the book. For some reason, they used it for this. Now, the cover that most people are more familiar with is the one, this is the one we all know and love from the DVD release, where you have um, Pascal on, on, the, on the front of it there. Now, this one's, I like this a lot better, but here, I guess, for some reason, they had to go with, with the book cover, which is, all, which is also, it's not the worst. I mean, it's kind of cool, but that's what it is. Now this movie, I, and I read the book and watched this movie at probably too young of an age, but it, it stuck with me. Now this movie has received an impressive 4K restoration, and it was supervised by the director, Mary Lambert, who also directed part two. This release stays true to the colors of the original movie, and everything for the most part looks crisp and organic. I recommend this upgrade over any previous release. Now, I appreciate the casting of Fred Gwynn here. He's an actor I knew who, from the Munsters. He played Herman Munster in the, in the show, and it was a comedic part. And I really enjoy seeing a comedic actor taking on a dramatic role here. You know, I thought, especially in, in a horror movie, and I thought he did a, a great job. I especially like it when he tells the story of, of Timmy Batterman to Lewis Creed to try to convince him not not to bury his son in the pet cemetery. It of course falls on deaf ears, but um, it, it's very convincing, and it's also convincing when he this character is the one that 
he's the one that tells him to bury the cat to begin with. And it's always like, why did he do it? But the way that he does the, he says he doesn't know why it's just some things, you know, he doesn't understand why he did it. And it, he, you believe him again. I think this is the best one. I think it still holds up today and the transfer looks terrific. Even if this cover is superior, if you have a different opinion on your ranking of the Pet Cemetery movies, feel free to say so in the comments. And if you haven't done already, um, subscribe and like the video.